policy consultant for the Edmonton Regional Learning Consortium, but we're putting this webinar to accessing ADLC resources online, the advanced version. Um, I have an ADLC resource and now what? So we're joined today by two ADLC facilitators. The first one is Trista Duell. Trista has been with ADLC for uh, 11 years and she uh, works in the technology department as uh, working with uh, Moodle and SIS support. And as well, we also have Carla Montgomery. Carla is the science department head in, uh, for the high schools and she also teaches uh, Chem 20. And we also have our um, tech support today, Wanda Deschant. Wanda is from the Calgary Regional Consortium. And uh, today, without further ado, we are going to learn some uh, tricks and tips, assuming that you've already had access to ADLC resources. Now, if you have not, we do have the beginner session repeated next Monday and this advanced session as well repeated next week. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, not on Monday, on Tuesday. And then the advanced session is on Wednesday, if you'd like to tell your colleagues about that. And those webinars will be from four to five. Uh, you will receive a re video recording of today's session. And so uh, please feel free to chat, uh, type your questions in the chat box um, as we are going through it. And we will periodically stop to answer any questions that you may have. And with that, I will turn it over to Carla or Trista. Uh, Carla, Carla will start on this one. Um, I'm fighting a bit of a chest cold. I don't have a fever, so I think I'm okay. Uh, but I may mute every now and then just to cough. So just to let everyone know. And the bit.ly was shared in the chat. So you guys should be able to follow along and the, there are links in there. Now, some of the links you won't be able to access because they're just kind of um, little hints and tips for me to access uh, my course to show certain aspects of it. So just um, I've taught in a brick and mortar school for 13 years. So I have that lens that I'm looking at uh, this new world that we're in. Uh, I also have a husband who is currently teaching in a brick and mortar school. I have an elementary age child and a junior high age child. So I have a lot of lenses that I'm looking at this from and living in right now. I have one child who wants to do everything perfectly and has meltdowns and I have another one who's like ah, oh, everything's okay and it's good to go so it's interesting to see all the different aspects of this. Uh, just an overview of ADLC resources just a reminder that these are the full curriculum and they're designed at grade level so as an educator you're going to have to go in there and make some choices and streamline the resources because there's no way uh, in the remaining weeks that the students would be able to cover everything in there. Um, and it's, and just recognize that how we have our resources set up, each of the teachers may not be exactly how you would have taught a concept, just like every classroom in Alberta is different. Every online course is gonna be different. And we're just hoping that you'll find something in there that you can use, use with your students and kind of lighten your load and um, make it just a little bit easier for you to transition to this teaching at a distance. Uh, the the uh, contact information is there. We have our general ADLC website that has lots of information, our phone number. Info is our general email that you can send and our partner support uh, team will answer your questions. We have the link to this presentation so you can always have it and then you'll be able to um, access all these uh, resources and information and then that that's my email address so just to outline I'm just gonna look at where where to begin some of you have already started with this online world I know both my children have been working the last three days with their um, materials provided by their teachers I just do a brief overview of ADLC resources and the type of access and then look more specifically at navigating the Moodle dashboard board navigating in a resource and then if you wanted to do some modification some ideas about marking examples of integrating contact uh, content some other online tools and techniques like video recording or synchronous sessions and q a but i am at any time 
willing to be interrupted if you want to go down a road more and a better explanation of something or if you find that I'm touching on stuff that's uh, underwhelming you let me know and we can go dive deeper into some of the 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 resource and how to modify anything like that so I'm here to go in whatever direction that the the group wants to so please use the chat and our moderators will let me know um, where we want to go uh, this I'm not gonna go to this but this is just here for your reference so Google has created a hub where they have ideas about teaching with all their Google products so I saw that and thought I'd just pop it into this slide so you can have access to it if you haven't seen it already and then the other thing I want to just touch on briefly is onboarding so uh, one suggestion someone had was to use a Google form to collect some of the key information so what we picture our students are doing in their house probably isn't the full story. So there's a lot of information you may want to collect and make sure you have it all in one spot. So a Google form can do that if you send that out to the parents or the, the student, depending on their ages. Finding out the device that they're going to be using. So some of your, your students may not have access to a camera or a mic. Um, make sure you have their email addresses and phone numbers and mailing address, physical address if you have to send anything out. Uh, I know probably when people were in their head planning, they were thinking, oh, I'm going to do a synchronous session. That may not work because not all of your students may be able to align with the rest of their family members when they can access it. Uh, ha knowing how many children are in the house or are parents working at home. Um, and another good one is what it sounds like at home. I'll have sessions with students not just now in this um, new order of the world, but previously if I had students working at home, uh, they may have younger siblings that are crying. They may be not um, in a room where they have good internet access. So there's lots of complex situations. And so being adaptable is going to be really key. And we're lucky that teachers are all really adaptable. The ministry came out with great guidelines to give us some idea of what online learning should consist of. And so what I've created, and in here, if you click on this pencil document down here, uh, that takes you just to a Google Sheet that I kind of threw together. In my head, I was going, if I was doing this, how would I kind of organize um, the day and the weeks to come? And so I have it set up kind of with the elementary, junior high, and senior high levels and how many hours of instruction they're supposed to have. If you haven't worked in Sheets before, just three key things is that you can make boxes bigger. So if I wanted on my Monday to put more information in there, I could just drag that down to make it bigger. And then if I wanted to prioritize my outcomes that I wanted to cover with the students, I could put them in there. Second thing is just that you can wrap the text so it's all in the one box. And then the third thing is just if I wanted to do a hard return, it's just control enter and then it makes those returns, control enter like that. So this would just be one of the key steps is just when you have an ADLC resource, kind of think of the outcomes that you need to reach um, for your students to move on and continue in their learning journey. And then you could just look at the ADLC resource and then start popping in some links of where those content items are found in the ADLC resource. And so the kind of resources ADLC has is our courses. And so I'm hoping that all of you have um, teacher access, that you are users and you have our um, resources at your fingertips right now. As soon as you are enrolled as a user, you have read only access to all the courses. And then once you want to interact with the resource, and if you want your students enrolled to interact with the resource, you need to have a section created. And just one other resource I want to touch on is that in our, on our website for grades four to nine, we have some self-serve documents that can be downloaded directly from our website. And they're called preview review, and they're kind of condensed um, anthologies of the materials for these grades and subjects 
They're kind of meant for students who maybe were struggling and need to catch up over the summer, but it might be a good resource to have right now. Uh, grades four, five, and six just have language arts and math, and then the grades seven, eight, and nine have language arts, math, science, and social. So those are kind of all the resources that we can uh, provide you. So the next thing we want to look at is navigation. So if you do have your Moodle uh, TS server open, just getting into your course and then how do you navigate? So one of the big things is that as soon as you have your sections created, then they're going to populate a dashboard at the top. And the dashboard can be a little cumbersome and you just have to make sure you scroll through the dashboard. This is where any marking that needs to be done would show up. I just don't want to um, show any student names, so that's why I'm kind of scrolling through. But when a student does submit an assessment, if you are having them complete assessments in your course, if you have them enrolled in your course, the link to the assessments would show up here and you can just click on it and it takes you directly to that student assignment so that you could assess it. So we do have, as soon as you're enrolled as a teacher, you should have access to the self-service section, which you have read-only access to all of our courses. So this is where you'd want to go if you wanted to just look through the resource, you don't want to edit the resource, and you don't need your students to interact with the resource. What you could do is access the PDFs for it. So for example, if I went to um, language arts eight. I'm going there because I have a daughter in grade eight. So if I was the teacher for language arts eight, so I don't have editing access, so this is the kind of access that you would have for all of our courses. And then when you come in here, a great place to go was just under the content, and then there's the table of contents. And that lets you see everything that's going to be in the resource. And this first section is where we have our online content. And we can see we have content pages by this icon. We have assignment submission pages by the hand. And any of the check marks are using the quiz tool where students answer questions online and submit it using that tool. Once we go through all of the online content, you then have the student resources down here which there are print modules. So if you were working in another LMS or you were working in um, Google Classroom, which I guess would be an LMS, you could take any of these PDFs, download it and upload that into your um, Google Classroom. So students would have access and these would be your content pages. And then you could also have the students um, access assessments there as well. There's also the teacher support information where the answer keys are stored and students do not have access to them. There's also the teacher support information where there is a welcome letter and teachers put in pertinent information and their contact information. So I know if I have a question about the English Language Arts 8, I can contact Megan and she'll be able to answer and direct, any, direct me with anything I need to know. Moodles, I know some people keep asking what's Moodle. It's just a learning management system, a place where students get content assessments. It would be parallel to Brightspace or Blackboard or Canvas, Hapara, Google Classroom, so anything like that. So if I say Moodle, I'm just talking about the course. So the key places where you're going to find information on when you first enter a class would be, we've got the navigation and I think I can go into my course. So um, you, if you click on the link, won't have access to it, but I've highlighted on that um, Google slide where all the key things are. So this is just where you dock and undock and you can see there's navigation there and participants. I usually keep it docked. Um, we have course search block. Now not all courses have this enabled, but you very easily can enable it and I can show you how to do that. What's What's important about this is you can enter your keywords and then it'll tell you exactly what pages 
that concept is being covered on. So maybe you are teaching, obviously I'm gonna use chemistry because I'm the chemistry teacher. So let's say you wanted to know about um, moles. Well, that's probably gonna bring back a lot of, and you click go, it's gonna let you know which pages, should have picked a better example, uh, which pages that concept is covered in. You have the turn edit button on, and so that's gonna be if you wanna make changes or things like adding that block. Um, there's some more different blocks there. Is this where you add the block from uh, Trista? Course management? She's nodding, I think. Sorry, I lost my button. I couldn't find my unmute button. I believe so. I haven't done it in a long time. Um, it is something to do with editing. Wait, scroll down to the very bottom of the page, Carla. So that's where I thought it should be. It should say add block. Yeah, it's not there. Sorry, we just this. updated our Moodle. Here we go. Yeah, it's in here. Left. There we go. Right. There we go. So if you add a block, so uh, not all courses would have that course search feature and I find it very useful. Students find it very useful as well. Um, you can come to, so we undocked, scroll down to add a block and again you'd have to have your edit, editor turned on I think to do this and then I'm not going to see the block listed here, course search, because I've already got it added. But these are all the different blocks that can be added which all a block is is just this little bit of um, extra information that's on the side. For example, I know our social studies department in some of their courses have a HTML block and that's going to be where they, um, they have a Twitter feed they follow and they put the Twitter feed there where they're directing students to certain uh, current events. So the course search, if it's not in your in turned on in your course, you can turn it on by making sure your editor is turned on, that you have undocked your um, navigation on the side, and then you'd select add a block. And I find course search very useful. What else is important across the top here is that, um, there are help files here. And that's gonna be if you have students enrolled in the course and they want to know how to um, navigate in a quiz, how to submit a quiz, how to submit an assignment if you're using all those tools. It gives um, uh, help files in video form and PDF form. And the other key thing is gonna be this table of contents or the contents here, that's how you're gonna to get to the table of contents. Uh, if you're enrolling your students and you want them interacting with the content, because your students are coming in partway through the year, you probably want to um, shrink down some of the content. So under the edit buttons on the side, you can hide, and this I'm hiding, I'm editing this whole unit, I, you can hide the whole unit. So my students, if I'm bringing them into this ADLC TS section, we've already done unit A. I'm going to hide that whole unit because I don't need to overwhelm my students. So we can hide that. Maybe we've already even done unit B and I can hide that one as well. You can also hide page by page and you know it's hidden because it's going to be grayed out. And then students wouldn't be able to access it. I'm going to just um, un hide this. I'm going to show this. Uh, so if you want them to see it, you just put show. Just because this is my master copy, so if someone was making copy right now, they'd get it, I think, in that format where Unit A would be hidden. So just want to make sure that's available. And please do, like I said, if anybody has questions um, and we're expecting something different to be covered, let me know and I can answer any questions as we go along. So we looked at the table of contents. We looked at going down to the teacher resource, teacher support information page. Um, each course, there is a um, listing on our website now that says 
who the lead teacher is for each course. So if you have questions, you can contact that teacher and they will help you. Uh, plus at ADLC on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we're running some sessions where lead teachers are have um, an hour session where they just are answering questions. So you can look on the website to access that as well. So our PDF materials, usually you scroll down to the student resources, that's where you can find them. You can download them, you can upload them to the Google Classroom or another LMS, and you don't have to worry about copyright as long as, you, as it stays intact. So if you start to dismantle our resources, then there could be a problem with copyright because we have some third party items that just we have permission to share them with you but we don't have we can't give you permission to take it and then move it somewhere else so as long as you're using the whole resource as in the whole pdf and you're not like cutting it out in, and using this picture then then we're all good to go and you don't need to enroll students you don't even need to have a section made you can just um, download that from the read only section so when would you want to enroll your students? And that's if you want them to interact with the content. So maybe you want them to do one of the quizzes. Uh, maybe you want them to do one of the lab activities. Maybe you want them to watch some of the instructional videos. So all of those things, you would need students to interact with the content and they would need to be enrolled in the course. Uh, there, there can be, they can be bulk enrolled, so it's not like each student has to be typed in separately. They can be bulk enrolled. And we have documentation on our website about that. I went over the icons. Again, this page, just if you're reviewing it in the Google slide later on, the online content has the content, quiz tool, and submission pages. We talked about turning the editor on, and that's if you want to modify content, you're going to need to do that. We talked about hiding the units. That's probably one of the things you may want to do. And what the next thing we want to look at is quizzes. So I've had some questions about quizzes and um, how, stu how you can see it or something like that. So if this was an assessment using the quiz tool and you as a teacher want to look at it before you um, assign it to your students, you can just look at it during a preview. So there's a button down here that says preview and you can look at it that way. You can, on this navigation bar over here, it shows you how many questions there are and you can just go through in the preview mode and look at all the questions. You can actually go ahead and answer any of the questions that you want in the preview form. What else you can do is when I'm at the quiz landing page, I can come up to the edit button and I can edit the quiz here. Now I keep using the term quiz because that's what it's called in Moodle. That's, it's a quiz tool. Um, for, for my course and for lots of courses, this is where we just have the assignments in, in the quiz tool. So on this view, we can see all of the questions that are in this assessment. If you want to see them, we can just hit the preview button here. And when you're in the preview button, button, you can then submit, oh, you can fill in the correct responses. So you could see what the answers were right away. If you see a question and you're like, mm, I don't want my students answering that one, uh, I'm paring down my outcomes to just those essential outcomes, so I'm going to delete that, you can go ahead and delete anything by just hitting the trash can. You can also, if you wanted to, you could add questions. So you could even add a new question if you're really adventurous or if you are familiar with Moodle, and know how to um, select the question types and fill them in. So how I envision this is I can see most often if you're using the quiz tool, previewing the quizzes, seeing if the quiz questions are what you would want your students to answer, and then deleting them if you don't feel that that's a prioritized outcome. 
And again, you can just check the answers that way. Carla, I'm just going to give your voice a rest for a second, and I'm going to interrupt with a question. Um, Edley has found the ADLC to be a great resource, and he's been trying to promote ADLC with their teachers, and he just got a response from a teacher who he set up as PS so that the teacher could help their son in grade four. And, um, but uh, she said that there was a lot of broken links and embedded videos and that it was slow. Is there anything that can be done? Uh, Trista, that might be more of your question because that's, I think, a little bit more technical. Um, it does depend. Some of the courses have more videos than others. If they're right in the page, what you could do if you're not, especially if you're not watching them, uh, especially if she's set up as a teacher, is use the print version. And if it references a video, then go into the online to do it at that point. It depends on your internet connection. I mean, for, for myself, sitting in town with fiber to my house is probably fine. If I'm living out in the country and I'm using the TELUS hub and TELUS is having problems like they did yesterday with their cell service, it really won't work. Um, so it does depend. If they do find a lot of specific issues with pages and stuff, I would suggest that they contact uh, the course teacher. I'm not sure which grade four course that is. Um, the teachers would be able to help with that and maybe we need to update the TSM instead of just using the errata sheet. If the teacher does need help with that particular issue, then they can um, contact uh, tech support themselves, the teacher of the course can, and we can work with them to get that fixed up. But it really does depend if the if that teacher wants to send an email to uh, tech support student, all one word, at adlc.ca. I'll put it in the chat here because I know I'm talking really fast. Um, so which um, grade four class or course? Is a TS for this course. Yeah, is... Um, do you which know which specific it? course it is? There's four or six of them or something for grade four. And do they have a section of their own or are they just using the TS read access? Do you know? the teacher did not specify which course it was or topic okay you can also have them while they're in the in the course they can eat they can email that with that kind of information or they can just a second i'm going to put our one eight six eight six six seven one two three four five three two two they can call this number uh ts means teacher support it means you are teaching your students um, that's what ADLC uses for that teacher support is something we give you use our materials and you teach it to the students. Um, SI is student instruction. That's when our ADLC teachers like Carla teach students enrolled specifically into her section. I guess that's because the, the teacher is actually the parent in mm -hmm. this case and they would. And so that's why they're enrolled as TS because mm -hmm. they're not the direct teacher. Yeah. And like Carla's got the science for a radish sheet up kind of going back and forth in here. You can see, you can find the, under the teacher information page, there's also the teacher contact you can see on the screen there, where it tells you how to reach the course's teacher, the person who on ADLC side, who is responsible for the course. If you have questions about the content, for example, um, a links are broken, or this isn't going where I want it to go, or that sort of thing about the actual content. I, I'm not a teacher. I have definitely not written these broke these courses. I can't speak to the content, but Bill in this case could, because he's the ADLC teacher for these this particular science course. I think he does all of grade four, but I'm not 100% sure. But um, in any of the TS courses um, in that list, if you're using the read, the read access and you scroll down and you're like, oh, I wanna see about this, but I have a question about it. You can contact the teacher who's listed in there by phone or by email. Both are listed on that page on the errata sheet. That's part of the reason it's in there. And um, the numbers I put into the chat window here, uh, the email address and the phone number is to tech support. And the teach your your guys' staff, your guys' students, we, we recommend that students, especially with Moodle stuff, talk to their teacher first, just to see if it's something obvious that you know they're doing wrong, they're clicking the wrong link, that sort of thing, to have them try contacting you first. Um, and then if you need help getting it fixed up for your student, you can email our tech support and we can help you as well. 
Great, thanks, Trista. Um, and we did just before all this um, happened, we did move our courses from one server to another and so for some reason that may have broken some links or anything like that so please do reach out and let us know and we will get in there and fix whatever we can as soon as we can are there other questions out there i'm not seeing any carla so i guess you can go ahead Okay, and again, if, if this isn't the direction that the majority of the crowd wants me to go in, I can go in any other direction, I can answer any questions, you just let me know, and I'm here to help you as much as I can. So we were looking at editing the quizzes, so if you are using a course and you want to use the assessment and the quiz tool, just looking at how you could adapt it. Um, you can also, after the fact, if you just let the students answer um, the assessment in the quiz tool, and then when you go to grade it, uh, you can say, oh, well, I guess they don't, I don't really cover that question. I'm going to omit it. That's fine. You can obviously record any mark in your system that you want based on how you evaluate the assessment. Okay, so this page in the sheet, if you come back to the slide, just kind of shows you where you would go to preview, modify, delete, or add questions. Okay, this is um, Google Classroom and Student Guide. Okay, so this just links into my Google Classroom. So when you, if you go onto this side, you won't, um, you won't be able to access it because it's just into my Google Classroom. But this would be how I can kind of envision using the courses. You still need to direct the students. They're not just gonna go gung-ho through the ADLC course. Um, but this is how you could direct them. So I would post a daily work schedule. Um, in my Google Classroom, the students would go in I would make sure I gave them my contact information so that they know how to get a hold of me. And then I would just lay out each day what I'm expecting of them and then direct them into the course with a link. So this again is if they have been enrolled in the course and they can access it. So it could be a, a link directly to an assessment and then they would go in and they would complete the assessment and I would then afterwards go in and mark it. It could be that I um, give them content pages for them to go read. And most of our content pages um, are set up in a similar fashion. They, they uh, will have an introduction. They have the learning targets listed. This one is just an overarching introduction. But usually you have the learning targets listed, what the students are going to be learning on this page, uh, the key concepts, and then practice questions. So that might be a way you utilize the course. You may also have yourself giving a video talk. So you may have an instructional video that you post in your classroom and then the students would just come in and see it and watch it and you would let them know what you're expecting of them um, for that day's work or if you wanted to go over a certain topic. These are all just little quick videos uh, instructing these concepts. So you may want them to just watch a video and answer a few questions. So there's lots of different ways. Uh, you may want them to do a synchronous session. So you may just have a link to a Google uh, Hangout that they're gonna join you for. So there's lots of ways that you can integrate uh, ADLC content into another platform. Again, if you want them to see the content and to access it themselves, they need to be enrolled. Uh, student contact is really important. Um, if, if students don't have their parents at home, they may be floundering with how to get started, how to give you, how to hand in assignments, how to ask you questions. So making sure that onboarding is done and they are really well aware of how to get a hold of you and when to go to hold of you, that's important. 
So these are more so tools. Some of them are outside of Moodle and how you can make that connection with your student. One piece of advice is to keep the videos short. If they're too long, number one, there's going to be long upload times. And with everyone right now trying to get their videos in Google Classroom, uh, YouTube, everything like that, it's taking a long time to upload videos. So if you keep them short, it'll reduce that. These are links to some of these um, extensions that you can get. Screencast-O-Matic, Screencastify, Soapbox, and Loom are all extensions. Now, I've never used Loom. I've used Soapbox, and that was what, um, well, that, that's where we were going. Um, this video was a Soapbox video. And what's interesting about this is that you can do the split screen. Um, so you can do the split screen where you see yourself, you see the screen, um, or you can see both. Screencastify is one that a lot of people are using. And with uh, COVID-19 pandemic, Screencastify has um, made their free resources more accessible. So it used to be a five minute limit per video and you were limited to the number of videos you could do um, to have a stored. So that's been changed. So any of these that you have been using, continue to use, or if you want to check any of these out because you've never made an instructional video before, you can try these ones. Uh, another one I didn't put on here, maybe should have, is that there is an extension in uh, Gmail directly and I think it's called screencast recording for Gmail. So you can record directly into an email and send that out. And I find that useful if I have a student who is email me question says, hey, how do I answer this? Then I will go ahead and make an, a video directly to them. And I don't need to have it stored for other people to see. It's just that one-on-one -on -one video. So I find that's a good one to use. I've never used Loom, so I can't comment on that one. Doceri, what I like about Doceri is that it's on, um, you can put it on an iPad and then you can just kind of write on the iPad. You can take a stylus and write right on the iPad and then you can email that video while you talk and write and you can email that video directly. So I find that quite convenient and you don't have to, again, worry about some of those upload type times. And that one, again, is more so that one-on-one, -on -one, a student has emailed you and said, I'm not sure how to answer this or how can you explain this concept to me? You can record a Google Meet and then you could upload that to your um, classroom, Google Classroom as well. And then write in Moodle. So if you have a Moodle uh, course that you have not read-only access, but you have been enrolled as the teacher, you can record directly in Moodle, and then you can also upload directly into Moodle. And I found it a bit quicker. So in when I just took one of my videos I had on my desktop, it was about a three minute video. And in under a minute, I could upload it into Moodle. Whereas when um, I've heard back from some teachers trying to upload into Google Classroom or into YouTube, it's taking like an hour, two hours, sometimes 24 hours. Another tip is that if you um, record on your phone, so if you use your phone as your recording device, instead of uploading from your phone, if you first of all email it to your desktop and then upload from your desktop, that goes quicker. Your phone can be very slow. But I'm just going to pop into Moodle now just to show you that uh, the process that if you wanted to record um, something to your students, how you would do that in Moodle. Oops. I might show you how to do that in Moodle. So again, um, this gear is where you go in to edit. So this is a content page and I can edit this page or you can edit this page by just clicking in here and going edit settings. 
there's always two boxes. This top one is a description, which would show up on your table of contents. So usually you don't want to, well, you can have it displayed, but this is not where we usually put the content is in this first one. The content is gonna go down in this second one. And so if you wanted to record a video, you reading or something like that, all you have to do is hit this record button. Now it's not gonna let me because um, I already have the camera in use and it's gonna say, I can't do this, but that's all you need to do. And you can start recording. It does limit it to two minutes, I think. But you can record yourself right into Moodle if you wanna say hi to your students and make that connection with them. And then you can also upload a video from your desktop. Again, this gear is how you edit pages. And um, sometimes you need to have the editing turned on up there. But if I edit settings, and if I wanted to add a video, then I would just click here. And then I could find in on my computer where I have my video stored, I would pick one of my files and then upload my video. And again, I said it was very quick and easy uh, the last time I uploaded it. Krista, could someone direct, or, or Carla, sorry, could someone directly um, link to a YouTube video? Yep. Or does Ab it <laughs> Absolutely. So if I wanted to link to a YouTube video, what I would do is I would just type in watch this video and then when I opened up the YouTube and now this could be scary what's going to come up when I go to YouTube for my my current watchings in YouTube it's going to be a bunch of music videos uh, so let's say we wanted to upload upload us this video I'm, Okay, I would just need to grab this URL and then highlight this word because then it would give me that link on those words and then just the link button. So I click link, control V. I like to have it open in a new window. So I click this button because I just like it, I like them to stay on their page. But you can also um, create an internal pop-up or you can, if you don't click this button, it would just, when they click on the link, replace this page that they're on, which isn't ideal. And I think now YouTube videos automatically embed into your course because Moodle changed their settings. So now we're just gonna save and display. Yeah, so YouTube, videos by default automatically embed in your course. And then the students could just play the video right there. That was a great question. Do you want to see that again? Is it pretty straightforward? Are there other questions about that? Okay, I will carry on then. But any questions like that, please do ask. I'm here to show you what you need to know. Um, synchronous classes, I think people, when they envision setting up an online class, they're like, yes, I, I taught CAM at nine o'clock at my school, nine o'clock every day, I'm gonna have a synchronous class where all my kids are gonna come in. And now they're finding out, mm, not all my kids are awake at nine, not all of them have access to a computer at nine, they're, um, fighting with their siblings or their parents for internet access. So there's a lots of things going on. So before you designate a synchronous class, just kind of think about your age group, how much interaction you want, what time it's going to be at, and if it all works out, you can set up a Google Meet and then have them all join in. And to do that easily, um, you can just go to your calendar and what, whatever time you would want to Google Meet, you can just click there. Um, say it's going to be my Chem 20 class. And you just need to add conferencing down here and add conferencing. And now I've got a link to a room that I could email out to my students. And then they could meet me there. 
um, in my Google Classroom here. I actually have a kind of a permanent classroom so my students could enter that any time. I'm not going to be there all the time. Maybe I'm going to have office hours that I can write beside it, but it's very easily to create that synchronous room so that you can meet your students there. If you're in that Google Meet and you want to write something, use your computer as a whiteboard, you just need to click that share button. So I'm not, I'm not quite sure if I can do that. Um, in my when I have something else going on again just because my camera is being used okay uh, so you can just select this present now down here and that lets you select which screen you want to show to your students and maybe you then want to use a whiteboard so that you can write uh, some notes to them so that they can watch you problem solve something. So then they would see this board and you can just grab your pen and then you can just write and be prepared for your writing to look horrible. Um, I do have one of those stylus and tablet things, but I, my writing still looks, I think, terrible, but that's okay, it's all good. Okay, let's come back here. And then you can, oh, you can record that meeting down here. So if you wanted to, you could record the meeting. Um, if that's how you wanted to uh, set up a lecture for your students or um, a video for them to figure out how to, to do any um, concept that you're trying to teach them. And just I have that link in the bottom of my email so anytime I send an email I do have that link so if a student needs to access my classroom I've already got it set up I don't have to go and set up a new meeting room all the time. So online whiteboards there are several that are interactive that you can use so that if you want your students to be able to show you what they're doing they have that opportunity or if it's a place where you want to write on the whiteboard and just record it as if you were doing a lesson to the students. So the Jamboard is part of the G Suite. What I do find with it sometimes is that when I'm writing on it, there can be a bit of a delay. So I've noticed that with Jamboards. Um, there's also another one called Web Whiteboard, and there's a link there that you can go to it. And again, you send the link to the students. Both of you can write on it, or all of you, if you send the link to many people, can write on it. You don't need to sign up, you can get a 30-day free board. Your board just would expire in 30 days and you just have to send out a new link to it. LearnCube is one I've used a few different times and if you sign up and um, they're quite reasonable right now for the prices, um, but if you sign up they do have special tools for math, uh, chemistry, and language labs right built into LearnCube. You can also do um, a session where students can video in as well, video in on one side and you have the whiteboard there as well. And then one that a, a colleague recommended, I haven't used this one, is Whiteboard Fox. They said it's pretty easy to go in and start using it right away. But that's something if you can't connect with a kid in a Google Meet, so maybe they don't have that ability, but they can give you a call and on their computer, they can see the screen, they just maybe don't have a camera, or there's some something else. You could then talk to them on the phone and write on that web whiteboard and they would see what you're writing. Carla, are you going to demonstrate one of them so we can see how the whiteboards work? Absolutely. <coughs> um, so the, I, I had the jam board there. So this was the Jamboard and you would just need to share this 
you could either put their access in and you can change whether they can edit it or not. And that Jamboard was located just if you have a G Suite, just in the Google Apps. So it's this Jamboard there is that online whiteboard. And then web whiteboard is one that I use quite often as well. And then I just create a free whiteboard. So I don't need to sign up for anything. I can just create a free whiteboard. Check out the one minute demo. I don't want to. So I don't and know. I think it's worthwhile for uh, many educators to have those conversations at schools about um, like the district. Sometimes there's district licensing that they can get for some of these applications so that teachers don't obviously have to pay out of pocket to access some of these because I know a lot of these applications are offering kind of like free trials. And so it would be a good way to kind of try it out before you commit to a subscription or something. Absolutely. So for some reason, Web Whiteboard isn't letting me go in right now. Um, it Carl, could I don't be... know if you know, but you're still sharing with your Google Meet is still open and stuff too. Oh, so that's no it, good. It might be just too much for your computer. Oh. <laughs> So let's go with stop presenting here. And my poor computer's going, ah, oh, how much memory? Um, learn cube. So this one uh, it might take a few minutes because it's just setting up. Um, and this, it might um, accept and skip. Next. It just likes you have to check everything and then you enter the class. So again, it has the, the video and students, you can send them the login. And again, there's um, tools here. And this is, they do have some math tools in here. So if you were doing measurement or anything like that, they do have some math tools in there. And they do have other tools. And this one, you can uh, do a screen share. You can upload um, doc PDF documents right here. You can upload stuff, screen share. So I find it quite robust to use the Learn Cube. Uh, sometimes the the um, connections between the video and the audio sometimes that gets a little garbled, um, but it's just it's robust in other ways that I find. Okay, sounds good. We have about eight minutes left, Carla. So if there are burning questions, I would ask them now and interrupt me. Um, and another, another thing that people can do is sometimes students have handwritten work that they want to get to you. And so they take pictures and sometimes pictures take up too much memory or they're, they're too big of a file to email the teachers. It takes too long. Uh, so there are scanner apps and we've got cam scanner and tiny scanner and something I just found out um, a couple of days ago is actually iPhones and iPads. You know how they have the notes in there, the, the little notepad? That's a scanner. And you actually can use that to take pictures and scan it and email it. And it converts the pictures into a PDF, a single PDF. It's fantastic. Um, I might update that on here if I get a chance. And then just marking. Some teachers are wondering now, okay, how do I mark this item once they, the student emails it to me? Do I have to print it off? And so there are tools that you can use to, uh, for marking a PDF. One is DocHub, which is an extension that you can get. And um, then you can just, when you have a document up there, You can now write on the document. 
So you have all your tools up here, you can type on it and everything like that. So if a student sends you a PDF, you can now mark it um, on screen. You don't have to worry about printing it or anything like that. Adobe Reader is a free tool that you can download. And then same thing, you can use, uh, there's a link to where you can download it. You can again, again just on your computer then, uh, mark any assessments you can write on them. And right in Moodle, there are, you can mark assessments using the Moodle tools. So I just made a video instead of me going directly into an assessment because um, if I showed it right now, we would see the student's name. So I just made a video of me showing the tools right in Moodle. So if you have your students upload an assignment in the Moodle tool, then you don't have to worry about downloading it or finding another program. You can use Moodle tools to mark it right there. As well, I think an iPad, if kids send you a picture and you open it up, you can write right on the picture sometimes in an iPad or another tablet. Okay, so this just goes over the tools in Moodle. And then when you want to mark a quiz, so if your students are doing a quiz uh, using the quiz tool, you can then mark it. Uh, the navigation on here, it will show you whether it's right or wrong based on the color. And again, this goes to a video of how to mark. Uh, again, I just couldn't show you one live unless I put in a fake student um, because I, I don't want the student's name to show for, for FOIP reasons. But this just goes over how you can mark quizzes once your students um, write it and submit it in Moodle. And I can, like I said, if we, if anybody wants to, to go over that, we can. <coughs> Another option is students. You can put questions in. So if you're dealing with students learning to read um, and you want to hear them read, you can in a quiz tool, add in where they can record either their voice, just their voice. So if I hit record, um, it would start recording this and then when I'm done, it would upload the students speaking. You could as well do it as a video if you wanted to see the kids reading. So you could record a video. Again, it, it's not going to let me because I'm already using my camera, but you could if you need to um, hear your students reading or speaking, whether it's in a younger grade or in a language class. Um, Outside of Moodle, Flipgrid would be something. That's what my um, son is doing right now. He had to make a little video in French. Other tools, and I know I've got like three minutes left. Um, explain and send screenshots. I use that quite often. That's where you can take a screenshot, write on it, and then um, send it to email it to your students. And then, oh, I mentioned that already, the free screencast for Gmail. And these all have links to the extension, but I could show you how it works because I do have them on my computer. And then um, a tool for accommodation is Read Aloud. I know there is the Google Read and Write, but I find the cadence um, better in Read Aloud is another extension that can be used for reaching students who need that help. Oh, Q&A, two minutes. but I can show you anything you want, people. Let me know what you would like. Okay, so if anyone has any final questions, we'll just stay online for a few more minutes here. I'm just going to put in the chat box uh, access to Crystal, uh, Crystal's slide Carlos. presentation. Carla, sorry. <laughs> uh, it's like, because I always think of Trista, so then I think of Krista. I'm sorry, I've been doing that the whole time. Um, so, uh, thank you so much to our two presenters, Trista Duell and Carla Montgomery. And again, I just put in the chat box um, their slide deck, which has their contact information. And uh, we'll stick around for a couple of minutes if you have any final questions you'd like us to cover. But if not, uh, happy online learning.
and please stay posted to um, the ERLC website uh, because we are planning to have some more uh, upcoming sessions partnering with ADLC uh, for learning how uh, to use ADLC resources and also uh, with technology uh, integration for online learning. So thanks again also to Wanda Deschant from the Calgary Regional Consortium for our ed tech support. And uh, I uh, wish you the best of luck. Uh, it is a lot of information, but um, like everyone else in the province and globally, uh, we're all in it together. Um, so again, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and uh, take care of yourself. Thank you.